This video deals with how to make fence plots. So it's really just how to plot your profile data, but to stack it one on top of each other so that you can try and see trends in your data. So this is why fence plots are important. But it really seems to depend which data set you're looking at. So here's a nice magnetic grid, sorry, of some strong north-south dikes. And you can see these weaker east-west, well they're not exactly east-west, dikes coming off of them. And if your aeromagnetic survey or even your ground survey, uh, oh, this is aeromagnetic data, if your spacing had been larger, you might have missed these east-west dikes, especially probably because the line direction um, is probably east-west on this flying. Um, so let's see. So these were ground magnetic data that we collected in this region here, over this main dike, but also over this east-west dike. And when we look at the profile data, okay, so this is fence diagram, this is just showing you some spikes, but when we look in over here, this is the line data, and this big anomaly here is this more south dike that we see on the aeromagnetic data. But over here is this east-west dike, and you can see how small it is. And maybe if your line spacing had been different, you would have completely missed it on the grid. Sorry. You might have missed it completely. But when you go and plot up these line data, it so clearly comes through. And if it had been on one line and then not on any of the other lines, you might have said, well, that's um, noise or problem data. But the sheer fact that it continues across multiple lines makes you know that it is an actual dark. And you can see here, there's another dark coming through in this region. So it's very important not to just look at your grid data, um, but to actually look at these fence plots. And so now we will look in Geosoft how to uh, create these fence plots. And um, let's just see if there's anything else here. Yeah, it's just showing how you can zoom into these smaller darks. <laughs> and this is showing some noise along the way. And so yeah, this is the usefulness of these fence plots, is that you can zoom in um, and just get so much more information. And down here, interpretation of location of probable additional dikes and linear features. You can see even we were looking at this uh, small east-west feature over here, but maybe there's even smaller dikes over here called stringer dikes, which a mine would really need to know about um, in order to take it into account uh, when they do mine planning. So on the left hand side here yeah, I've got uh, some mag data that was collected and so let's zoom in down here because this is a database that I've got open and you can see if I click on my database it, it shows up on this map so I know that I've got the right database. So the main re thing that fence plot helps with is to see continuity of anomalies between mines and so what do I mean? So look this data set probably is not the best to show it, but if, for example, you had an east-west dark here, um, so I, I don't think these features are darks. Uh, darks would be very long, continuous bodies. So this is change in mineralogy or change in rock type. I'm not 100% sure. But you can see here, it seems like there's some sort of linear trend here between these anomalies. It could also be a factor of the gridding. Um, but say, for example, you knew that this did continue across lines and you wanted to map it. Grids are great ways to look at this, but the problem with grids is you lose a lot of the smaller features in the data. You don't always see um, the, uh, a lot of detail with the smaller features. And so looking at fence plots is the best way to look at these features. So again, it's not perfect in this data set, but for example, in another one I've seen before, you've got a dark, a huge dark, and you've actually got stringer darks, which are small thin darks on either side of it. And in the grid data you don't see it very well, but as soon as you look at the profile data you can easily see them continuing between lines. But anyway, let's get started with this data set. So what you can, okay, so in GSoft, a disclaimer, I only know how to plot three lines at a time, which is a problem, um, but it's yeah, it's the best. Like you'd have to go into Excel to plot all of them at the same time. But I'm just going to show you how it works in GSoft. Um, uh, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, uh, we'll just do plot three lines at a time, multiple times. Okay. And the other thing to keep into uh, keep in mind here is all of your lines. Let, if we take them in the northern part here, they're not all exactly starting at. 
um, the exact same latitude. They all slightly offset. So just keep that in mind when we have got our plots going because all your profiles all the, are going to start at the same point, but remember that not all the, the lines start at exactly the same latitude. But you'll see what I mean now. So something to keep in mind is I think your line data here is probably going to go north, south, south, north, north, south. It's going to be alternating. Um, so we must just keep that in mind when we make our plots. So this, okay, there's several different ways we can do this, but let's get going. So at the moment we've got latitude, longitude. Uh, is there any, okay, I've got uh, our data is also in meters here. I've converted it to LO. This is a South African coordinate system. So meters is also fine. The reason why I'm, I'm asking this is because we want to create a distance channel. And so that we can look on our x-axis at distance along the line. Now keep in mind now, if I keep my database exactly as it is here and I calculate a distance channel and then I plot them up, some of my lines are going to be plotting north to south and other lines are going to be plotting south to north. So that's just going to complicate things. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sort all of my data so it's plotting north to south. And how you do that is you go uh, settings, run GX, click on these three dots, scroll down to S, we're looking for sort. And I just click on sort all, I can't kind of always remember which one, so I just click on sort all and click OK. And now it says to you, what is your reference channel and what order do you want to sort things in? Um, sort read-only channels. Yes, I don't think I have any read-only channels. I don't think I've ever created a read-only channel. So the channel that I, the reference channel is the channel I'm going to use for sorting. And in this case, it's going to be the Y um, channel because I want to sort north to south. If I sorted the X channel, it would just be crazy because the, the lines are not divided up by X. Well, sorry, the lines, and you would probably do X if you were, if your lines were east-west. You definitely would do um, X if your lines were east-west, but because you're north-south, we're sorting by Y. And I want to sort it in terms of, oh, this is going to confuse me, because it's negative. I think we're doing it in descending. I think probably if you were in UTM, it would be ascending uh, because we're in LO, it's descending. This doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you're sorting north, south, or south, north, as long as they're all the same. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose, as long as they all end up the same. And click OK. OK, so it should have sorted everything now. So let's see, I'm going north to south. Let's go to the next line. OK, it's also north to south. So how I'm going to the next line quickly is I click on the line number up here, and then on my keyboard, I click on page up or page down. Okay, so I think it's sorted everything in the same direction. You can see they're all going north to south now. Okay, and now reminder why we did that is because I want my dist. I'm going to calculate the distance channel now. Well, this is just a really short line. I'm going to calculate the distance channel now, and if they had, um, if they had been nor some north to south, some south to north, then the distances aren't going to match up properly. Um, because zero will be down here on maybe this line, but zero will be up here on the next line. But now they're all north to south, so zero is all going to run along the top. Okay, so how I create a distance channel is I go database tools, channel tools, make distance channel. Okay, I'm going to use my X and Y um, channels. Sorry, I'm going to be use my LOX and LOY for the channels. You don't have to have it in LO, like I said, it's, I just did this because it's South Africa, but these values have to be in meters. You cannot use latitude and longitude here because then you're getting your distance channeled, channel calculated in degrees and everything will be very weird. Then the output channel is distance, that's the default. You don't have to have it in channel. Uh, maintain line direction. Oh, maybe we could have unchecked that, but anyway. Okay, so let's see if the distance channel worked here. So you go scroll right to the end of your database and I'll be over here. You can see distance. You can see it's got a hang of a lot of decimal places. Let's just click on the heading here, right click, edit, and take out some of those decimal places. It's your choice if you want to do one or zero. I'm going to do zero at the moment. Um, okay, so in general you can see each point was about 
uh, one meter apart. Maybe actually I'm going to go back and add in a decimal place, just so that ones like this where there's duplicate 95, I can see the different values. Okay, so we've got distance. So now we can work on our plots, because what we're going to plot is distance versus reading. And I suppose I didn't actually show you how to get the plot going. This one was already there. So let me take it away. So this is probably what your, look, your database will look like. So if you want to, whichever channel you want to plot, you're going to right click on the header, go show profile. If nothing appears, it's because it's hidden down here. You just got to drag up and you'll see your profile over here. So you can see your reading values over here. Again, there's quite a few decimal places. So I'm going to change it to just one. Remember what I did is I clicked on the heading. You can see it has to be so just the heading is highlighted. If the values are highlighted or if the whole thing is highlighted, I don't think it's going to work. You just keep clicking till just the heading is highlighted. Go edit and change one decimal place. All of this is just to make our plot beautiful. Interesting that it hasn't actually changed it here. Hmm, let's see what happens. Okay, another thing I'm going to do is at the moment, my X values are FID, which I think stands for fiducial, and it's these values on the left hand side here. So how do I get my distance values is I right click on the plot, I go X axis options, and I choose what I want my X axis to be, which is right at the bottom here is distance. Auto rescale X, I think that's fine. Click OK. And it doesn't change much, but you can see now it says distance at the bottom. Okay, so how do I get multiple lines? So how I do that is I drag this gray line up just at the bottom of the plot, and I drag it up again. Okay, and I think you could do it a fourth time, but in all honesty, I have no idea how to do four plots. So let's do this one. So let's think. So click on this middle plot. Bla that's blank, right click and go, hmm. uh, hold on a sec, I think you have to click on it and then go up to reading one, right, and click on the heading, so the heading is highlighted, right click and go show profile, click on the third plot, so that's blank, click on the heading, just so that the heading is highlighted, right click, show profile. So I've got three of the exactly the same profiles, but I don't want that because that makes no sense. So I'm going to keep the middle one, keep the middle one as is, click on the bottom one, which I've already got selected, right click on the screen, go profile options. And you're going to go here and click on source line uh, next. I'm trying to think which makes the most sense. Maybe click on previous. So the previous line's at the bottom, the next line's on the top. Okay, click on previous. Okay. And you'll see it's changed because it's actually taken the line before 90 and it's plotting it. And then this top profile, click on it so that the blue line is highlighted here. Click on profile options and click on next and click OK. And you can see this is a very short line that's next. OK, so this is plotting the previous line. This is plotting the line we're looking at, not line L90, and this is plotting the next line. We could probably, OK, if we want to see what's wrong with this line, we could just click up on here on L90, click uh, next to 110. And we've got a whole bunch of short lines here. It's just these small amounts of data. Um, yeah, you'd have to go through and sort out your data set. And then here's this one. Okay, I'm going to pause the video quickly and just take this data and paste it into the previous line. Is it the previous line? Okay, I'm pausing the video and just sorting this out. Okay, I must admit I gave up sorting that out because these are my data. Um, okay, the last thing I wanted to show you, and I don't really know a neat way of doing this, is how to keep your axes the same, or I suppose it's the second last thing I'm going to show you, how to keep your axes at one value, because you can see here, as I jump through the lines, watch these values on this middle plot, they change. And so you never really have an idea of what the biggest anomaly is because everything is auto rescaling. Let's see, profile options, no, it wasn't there. Yeah, because there was an auto rescale, but that's your x axis. I don't think it, if I look at y, no. Okay. So, okay, so what I just did here is I clicked on the middle plot, I right clicked, I went to y axis options. So this is. What are some of your options when changing a line? It says scale to fit for each line. So that's what's currently happening. It's rescaling. 
Here it says same axis scale for all lines. That's what we want. We want it to not change so we can actually see what are the big anomalies and what are the small ones. Same dynamic range centered for all, each line. Not 100% sure. I think this, this the center of the line will say this will change, but your range will stay the same. This one I'm not sure about. Profile scaling. So as you swap profiles, what should it do? Should it keep the same scale or should it rescale, which is what we've got? Axis direction positive upwards. So we want to keep same axis for all profiles as we um, go through the lines. So well, how I've done this in the past is I've had to first find the line that had the biggest anomalies, s use that one to set the scale, and then we can go change the lines. So I'm going to assume that one of these lines down here is the best one to use to set the biggest scales because it's got some big anomalies on it. So let me go... Okay, you can see... No, no, that's a terrible line. Okay, you can see this line here. It's pretty small, the rest of the line. But it's this anomaly at the bottom here that's quite big. So I don't know if this is cultural or if it's an actual legit thing. Let's look at values. It's at 2985 and down here it's 279. So it's going from about 28,000 to 29,800. So this might be a good line. So let's use this line. So I'm using a line that has the biggest positive and the biggest negative values. You, I don't know what you do if they're not on the same line. But anyway, let's see. Right click, go Y axis options and go same axis scale for all profiles. I have a feeling it was this one, but I'm going to do both of them. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't used this in a while, so I'm doing it on both of them. Let's click OK. And now let's see what happens when I change the lines if the scale stays the same. So I'm going to click up top here, and I'm going to jump through. OK, great. So you can see this middle one isn't changing. The other two are changing. Um, but this middle one isn't changing. You can see how small your anomalies are when you, just, when you use that big anomaly to... Um, help get an idea of how big, how small these other anomalies are. Um, okay, so, sorry, I'm talking a bit in circles. Let's do exact same things for the other profiles. So I'm going to click on this bottom one, and I'm going to go find that profile. So am I going the wrong way? Sometimes you can't always get it. Okay, so this is line 210. Can we get, this is the previous one. Is 210 the last one? Rescale all? Oh, sorry. Let me just pause for a second. Okay, something I think I'm also going to do is take off on the x axis, take off auto rescale. Because what it's doing is it's not, um, you can see here, let's click OK. Sorry, and I'm saving. This line has a, a x a distance of 170. But if it changes to like 50, it do, we don't see the profile stopping here. It stretches it out. Although it seems to do it there. Ah, sorry. Let me let me pause and sort my life out here. Okay. I don't know what it's done, but it seems to have sorted out. Okay. So what I did here is um, reminder. I took off auto rescale, and reminder for the x y axis options. I clicked in the middle for both of these. But I only did that once I had chosen the line that had the largest um, positive and negative. So let's do the same for the bottom here, if possible. So, okay, you can see this is um, that same line here. It's at the bottom, and I'm going to use it to help me fix my scale. So I'm going to right-click, Y-axis, same, same. I hope this part makes sense. It really does seem a bit confusing. Okay, I'm clipping off auto scale. And let's see if we can get the same line up here. There we are. This is the same line up here. Right click, Y axis options, same scale. Okay, so you can see we've got the same scale on all of them. And it helps us see how small these anomalies are. Okay, so it doesn't, our lines don't look as exciting anymore. They're not as crazy big. Okay. Uh, the reason why these lines are a bit short is it's parts of these lines. I haven't fixed the database. Okay, so this is how you plot your fence plot. Um, okay, so this we're at the end here. Unfortunately, I wish you could click down here and it would take you to the, 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 the correct line that this is, but it just keeps you constantly on this line. 
Okay, and now how do we plot this up? We go right click um, and then plot profile figure. You can add a title if you want, you can add a horizontal scale. I never click any of those, so I click OK. Okay, and it's plotted it up here. And um, let's check here which lines we've got. So if this we run L210, this is next and this is previous. So next is 210, 230, and the previous is 200. So what you can do here, 210, 230, and 200, I mustn't forget. You can edit your figure here. So I'm going to right click. Let's see. If, wait. Okay. Okay. How you edit your figures, you click on Map Manager here. And I'm going to click on the pin so I can um, see this constantly as it keeps on disappearing. You can see here's Stack 2, Stack 1, Stack 0. And um, if you click on the individual items, you can see what it relates to. It's either the plot or the surrounding. And that's the outside line, and that's the legend. So I want to edit the legend. So I'm going to click on legend, go right click, edit vector group, right click, select all. And now the top one, I'm going to double click on it. And this is, what did we say, L230. The middle one, we said, oh, sorry, I should double click on it. We said with L210, okay. And this one is L200. Okay. Okay. You can see it giving the y axis as readings. I want to say nano Tesla. You can use um, the items on the left hand side here to help you highlight. So the, this reading one highlights the whole box. And then I'm going to double click on it and keep double clicking until you can actually double click and edit. I'm actually going to put Nano Tesla here as my label. Here I'm going to double click Nano Tesla because reading one is not anything relevant. And it's, oh, see, now that I've, I've by accident clicked out, it won't let me edit it. So I'm going to go back here and click on reading profile on number three. Okay, Nano Tesla. Click OK. Okay, and uh, you can see here, interestingly enough, it's it's got the one decimal place because we chose one decimal place, but it doesn't really help us with anything. You could go well take out the decimal places. Okay, and then I think you could come back here to your database, sorry, wrong one, and change your lines and then replot it. So we said here is 200, 210, 230. If you then plot the next three, you could go create a new plot of them. So let me think, I'm going to hopefully not go in the wrong direction. So this is next and this is previous. So we want to move this upwards. And I always go the wrong way. So there and there. So these are the next three lines. Um, so you could now, I think we could actually, sorry, we actually want to get rid of this one. So this, we s sorry, this is very complicated. You probably all lost because I'm making no sense. So here we on L180, L160, L200, but we've already got 200. So we, let's move it down. So L60. Okay, so these are the next three sets of lines. And so you would right click, let's look what numbers they are. So it's L60, 160, 150, 180. So right click. Plot, okay. Oh, no. If it didn't write over the ones that we've got already, no. So let's quickly label them so we don't get confused. And legend, edit, select all, double click. We said this was L180. This is L. 60 and this is L150. You can, from what I remember, highlight, right click, go copy. Let's see if we can paste it in this window. And if we can paste. 
<laughs> that didn't work. Uh, paste your reference? No, I think that the thing is I've only highlighted. I don't think I've copied the right thing. I think I've just copied this around. And I think you might have to copy each one separately. Let's see, copy. We put them next to each other. That would help. You could, you very much could more easily do this in uh, Corel. <laughs> so this is saying centered in this bay window. Do you want to offset your image? I'm just going to okay, say centered. See, so this is the top one. So you're going to have to do this for each individual part of it, which is quite a spiel. Let's go legend. Copy your legend. Paste. Yeah, it's quite a mission. It doesn't always work. So, I, yeah, I wouldn't actually follow this route. I would go and do it in Excel. So I'm just going to delete this. Uh, not Excel, Corel or Adobe or something like that. Okay, so you've got your different plots. And then you can plot them, uh, put them all into a program like Corel or Adobe and put them one under each other um, so that you can correlate anomalies. Now, look, this data set, I think, you're not going to get too much out of uh, fence plots. Let me quickly find a, an image that I've got where fence plots did help. 